Everybody, I'm Larry Beal. Welcome to ESPN Classics presentation of college football bowl games. We now present highlights from the 1971 Rose Bowl between Stanford and Ohio State. Behind Heisman Trophy winner Jim Plunkett, Stanford would defeat the Buckeyes 27-17 to win the first of two straight Rose Bowls. After that, at 1 Eastern time, Florida takes on Notre Dame in the 1992 Sugar Bowl. And thank you for watching ESPN Classic. Only a few minutes by Western Jet commuter to Los Angeles, but this has been a trip three years in the making. Stanford realizing a goal that began in 1968 when Jim Plunkett first started quarterbacking the Indians. Head coach John Ralston and his mates gaining the Pasadena bid for the first time since the 1951 team. It'll take more than a tribal war dance by Prince Lightfoot to turn back Ohio State today. As Steve Horowitz kicked off to Ohio State, the Buckeyes knew that Notre Dame had upset Texas in the Cotton Bowl. The nation's number one ranking was within grasp. Only Stanford remained as an obstacle. Ten plays into the game, the Buckeyes get their first taste of that Stanford defense fronted by the famed Thunder Chickens, a major factor in the tribe's Pasadena trip. After John Brockington fails on third and one, quarterback Rex Kern meets the same fate as Greg Sampson, stops Kern on fourth down at the Indian 41. The Tribe takes over, Plunkett going to the trick bag on the first play with surprise starter Eric Cross at flanker. Instead to rock the Buckeyes back on their heels. The first time Stanford gets the ball, Cross running a reverse and goes 41 yards. First and ten at the Ohio State 18 as Plunkett throws his first Rose Bowl pass. A touchdown to Bob Moore. But the Buckeyes get a big break and Stanford cheers turn to groans as the officials call it back. A penalty nullifying the TD. Fighting off such adversity Plunkett takes matters into his own hands. His quarterback draw penetrates the Buckeye interior for 13 yards. And added to it, an Ohio State penalty. The Indians are inside the five. Yardage comes tough in here as our field camera shows Jackie Brown stopped for no game. But if you can't run it through them, says Brown, run it around them. And with the help of a Dan Lightfoot block, Brown finds the Buckeye end zone. We'll watch again as the Buckeyes yield only their fifth touchdown on the ground all season. It took Stanford only five plays to go 59 yards. And they're ahead of the Buckeyes before the game is five minutes old. adds the extra point and Ohio State knows they've got a battle on their hands. But Stanford defensive pressure is too much for the Buckeyes again. Ron Cagle stopping Leo Hayden for a loss of four and the Indians take over at their 48. Plunkett to the air again and Ohio State learns firsthand why the Stanford quarterback is the Heisman Trophy winner. First, the pass to Bob Moore for 17. Then to Demia Washington for 11. And next to Jackie Brown. But Buckeye safety man Jack Tatum is ready, attacks, and Brown fumbles. Hillary Shockley saves it for Stanford, though, and the Indians have it at the Ohio State 19. Now 
After three passes, back to the ground. Jim Merrill to the Buckeye 13. Plunkett under pressure. The Buckeyes calling on 17 starters and 29 seniors off the Rose Bowl team of 1969, the one that beat O.J. Simpson and the Southern California Trojans. Sophomores then, but seasoned veterans now. Plunkett taking aim on Randy Bataha in the end zone. But just out of reach. But a field goal is within reach of Horowitz. A 37-yard bullseye, and Stanford has a 10-0 lead eight minutes into the game. The first time this season that the Buckeyes had trailed by that margin. And they don't take it lightly. Kern pitches on a reverse to Bruce Jankowski, who gets up ahead of steam for 37 yards before Dave Tipton, with one of his 15 Rose Bowl tackles, stops Jankowski at the Stanford 28. Why was Rex Kern rated the number one quarterback in Ohio State history? Watch. Kern running, twisting, leaping, but fumbling as Tipton again breaks up the play. The ball out of bounds in Buckeye possession. Moments later on the third try against Stanford's goal line defense, Brockington smashes through for the touchdown. At ground level, the TD from the Stanford end zone is Brockington, the all-time Buckeye ground gainer, puts Ohio State on the scoreboard. Fred Schramm converts to make it 10 to 7, and Buckeye fans think the trip west was worthwhile after all. Stanford leading by three points, and back to the attack. Plunkett throwing to Brown. But the Tribe has to give up the ball. Kern makes it hurt. The game's top ground gainer rattling off another 32 yards down to the Stanford 23. Kirk Gowdy and Kyle Rove are going to the second period now. Ohio State has the ball on the Stanford eight-yard line with a third and six. And Ohio State outplayed in the first seven or eight minutes of the game has come back. They have run 26 plays to Stanford for 15, and they're starting to assert their ball control game now. 29 seniors here today for Ohio State. 13 of them started as sophomores two years ago. An unbelievable sophomore class they had. Six of those 13 sophomores have made All-American. They won't have too many better sophomore classes than they had here two years ago, or graduating seniors. Third down and six, Rex Kern at quarterback out of the wishbone tee. Kern pitching to Galbo. Galbo powering to the three-yard line. Rex Galbo, sophomore. And they're calling time on the officials. They may want a measurement. What a tough decision for the Stanford defensive unit. They can't afford to let Kern cut that ball back up inside because of his ability to run, as we've already seen in this ball game. And then when they force him, he makes the pitch out. He gets that outstanding running from a number of his backs, Hayden, Brockington, Galbo, whomever might be in the trailing position. Ohio State now and the Stanford three. Inches to go. Stanford digging in with that goal line defense. Rex Kern, the leading ball carrier in the game, the quarterback. Ask the crowd to quiet down during the regular team. This means the belly series when they run this. Brockingham to the two, maybe the yard and a half line. John Brockingham 
Oh, he's quick getting off that mark, isn't he, Kyle? Well, he's one of the, as we mentioned, he has that type of power, not only to right up the middle or off tackle, as we've seen, but also outside. This also goes for Hayden. Two very unusual backs. Both good size boys. Brockington's 216. Hayden, 208 pounds. Plenty to spare. Ohio State, first and goal. On the Stanford two yard line. Ohio State started this drive on their 45. They ground out with their meat grinding offense. Nine plays here. They're back to their old game, staying on the ground. They started out by throwing the ball. Turn. Take the ball and get it to blocking it, and he's in there. Third faking coming out. Blocking it right in. Here it is. Number 53, Brian Donovan blocking right in front. Another good block from Dave Cheney. There you see Brockington diving over. 55 yards in 10 plays for Ohio State. We're now dominating. Campana will hold. Red Schramm will attempt. And his kick is good. So action will continue here at the Rose Bowl. The score now is Ohio State 14, Stanford 10. Ohio State, Stan White will kick off. Notice he's going to boot from the far hash marks. He has that toe tied up. Looks like if he hit that thing real hard, he would puncture the ball with that front cleat. <laughs> nice. Jack Brown, on, Jim Merrill. And Jim Kaufman, Eric Cross is not back there. He's their best kick returner. Jackie Brown, a yard deep in the end zone with a 10. On a reverse, and they spill him on the 11. Cross was upfield. No wonder he wasn't back there in the goal line. He was up there to get a reverse, 20 yards upfield in the short lineup. That shows you how Ohio State is dominating now. They've run over twice as many plays as Stanford. Ohio State goes on the defense. Stanford will put the ball in play now on their 11-yard line. So far, Jim Plunkett is four out of eight for 44 yards. They haven't done much in the ground except for one run by Eric Cross of 43 yards in a reverse. Out of the split backfield, Plunkett, his receiver, Fataha, <laughs> fell down. On the 16, he still made the grab in front of Jack Tatum. Randy Vataha, who leads Stanford in pass receiving, caught 48. He's, uh, if you've ever seen Jerry Levias play, he used to play at SMU, now the Houston Order, he's very much like him. He's small, but he has great moves. He explodes off the line, can stop, and then change direction. Second down, five to go. Stanford on her 16. There's 
the draw play to stop Cole in the 16-yard line. With George Hazenall, number 70, a sophomore. They have two sophomore tackles up front, Ohio State. Now it's third down and five. Pluckett has to figure something out. Pluckett hit 18 touchdown passes this year, completed 53%, holds the all-time NCAA passing record and career total yardage record. Over 7,500 yards in passing, 7,800 yards for a total offense. The all-time record. Good protection for him. And that pass was completed. Boy, he laid that one right in there. Don Lampke on him. And look at number 68, Jim Stillwagon. That's the protection Kurt was talking about. They're putting two men on him, John Sandy and either guard, Carol Smith on the right or Lightfoot on the right, rather than uh, Smith on the left. They can watch more going out. Number 19, Don Lampke trying to defend against him. That's what you look for in a tight end like Moore. He can out wrestle you for that ball, big and strong. First down, Stanford on their own 24. They're going to their passing game. Again, great protection. The pass, look out. Kicked away and nearly intercepted by Jack Tatum, who timed his break. Was dashing in there. Flipped it out of bounds. Plunkett apparently lost sight of him for a moment. He, he could have thrown the ball a little sooner. Gave Tatum time to move into position. You'll always see Tatum on the open side of the field. Debevic, the end, 83 on the open side. And the linebacker, Stan White, on the wide side of the field. They have the greatest pursuit and speed. Tatum came to Ohio State as an offensive star and has never played a play on offense. Second down, 10 for Stanford on their 24. They're trailing 14 to 10. They got a blitz is on. Incomplete. But they were blitzing the safety man, Sensenbaugh. Mike Sensenbaugh came deep in a blitz after him. And we thought that Ohio State will start to put some blitzes on, but they're still protecting him. You saw, you saw it quickly, Plunkett threw it. He saw the, uh, there's number three, Mike Sensenbaugh. Came off a broken ankle early in the season. Led the team in interceptions with seven. There he is on a blitz. Plunkett picked it up, but uh, Shockley, the fullback, didn't. Third and ten now. Jim Plunkett is six out of 12 on the Stanford 24. Reset their backfield with Shockley and Brown. Time again. The pass is complete to Hillary Shockley. He's to his 33-yard line. He does not have a first down. Ken Lutner. The right end of Ohio State makes the hit on him. So it'll be a fourth down. Fourth and two. And going back is Tim Anderson of Collier's West Virginia Senior. They have uh, four players on this defensive unit made All-American defensive uh, team members this year. Here's the kick. Murray just gets it away. And they call for a fair catch on the 40-yard line of Ohio State by Harry Howard. You young athletes watching today's game should know that the NCAA has condemned the use of any drug by college athletes. Its team doctors agree there's no known drug which helps a player to perform better, despite a lot of rumors you've heard about. Naturally, these doctors warn against the use of illegal drugs by all young people. That drug scene isn't smart or cool. It's dangerous and destructive. Get high on sports, not on drugs. Coming wide at the 40 is Jankowski, the end. They're using him coming around today. That's twice he's got the ball off the end position. And Bernie Barnes made the stop on him. Dennis Moore playing that very smartly. The linebacker, right side for Stanford. Coming back. Forcing Jankowski. Second down, six to go. Ohio State under 44. They were stunned early in this game. They were behind 10 to nothing, just like they were here two years ago against USC. But now they rally to go ahead. The pitch out. And Rich Galbos is dropped 
by Jack Schultz, who's a great rugby player. Stafford has the best rugby team in America in college. It's a club team there. Schultz said, I used to hear all the yelling over there in Pasadena at New Year's Day. I didn't know what it was about. Now I'll find out. He lives just a few blocks reared from this Rose Bowl Stadium. On the 47-yard line of Ohio State, a third and three. Let's see how they've done on converting in third down. They have hit four out of seven so far. They've converted four times. Third down situations in the first down. Turn to the 50. He's short. He's short by a half yard. Now will they gamble with a 14 to 10 lead and a powerful ground attack. Jeff Seaman, the middle linebacker, and Jack Schultz, the safety man, stop Rex Kern. Rex Kern has carried the ball eight times. He is a leading ball carrier in this game. He's gained 66 yards. Woody Hayes pointing out. Kern looking to Woody. I think Woody wants a measurement. It looks like it's about four to six inches uh, away from that first down marker. It's a timeout they want. That's their second timeout that they've been charged. Their college team allowed four and a half, 9.52 to go and a half. And actually will continue here at the Rose Bowl to score. Ohio State 14, Stanford 10. And now we return you to our studios for this message. Hundred and fifty years ago, frontiersmen traded with the Indians on this land, and homesteaders following the Oregon Trail settled here. Their cabins are still standing. All this time, yet nothing's really changed out here in Marlboro country. Mustang are everywhere, and the country kind of stretches out forever. Come to where the flavor is. Come to Marlboro Country. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Fourth down, a foot to go. Ohio State will gamble at the 50-yard line. They're leading 14 to 10. And they have it. John Brockington goes to the Stanford 46. He was knocked down by Jeff Seaman, Stanford's middle linebacker, junior of Bakersfield, California. Ohio State now on the Stanford 46. Last three times they've had this ball, they've just driven, driven. 65 yards and 10 plays the last time for a touchdown. 65 yards and seven plays the time before that. Found that opening, Kern, and darts through to the Stanford 39. Kern, looking at that defensive alignment, saw Jeff Seaman, the middle linebacker, move over to the strong side of his formation, which left uh, Larry Butler and Lazatich just spread out there as the two defensive tackles, and that was the opening that Kern took. Ohio State has run off 34 plays to Stanford's 21. Rex Kern, an all-state in three sports at Lancaster, Ohio High School. There's the belly series. He runs the keeper. He goes to the 35, sprints away to the 30. And he's been the outstanding player in this game so far, no doubt about it. He's going to have 100 yards on the ground before the first half is over. You can see it again. Faking to his fullback, Brockington. Pulling the ball right out. C-92 Seaman, the middle linebacker, coming over. Getting a good block. And Kern again, pulling loose from tackles. Strong runner, 44. Jack Schultz finally bringing him down. 8.40 to go in the half. Ohio State leading 14 to 10. They pitch to Campana. Campana is hit by number 29, Benny Barnes. And he's dropped at the Stanford 20-yard line. Tom Campana, a junior of Kent, Ohio. We asked Woody Hayes, we said, you lose all these great All-Americans and seniors, how will you be next year? Very good, he said. We always have great material at Ohio State. We get beat us because of bad coaching. 
Second down, five. Wishbone key. Leo Hayden to the 10 yard line. Leo Hayden. 208 pounder of Dayton, Ohio, and it took Jim Coffin, the safety man, helped by his other safety buddy, Jack Schultz, to stop him. Ohio State, first down on a Stanford 10. Right now, Ohio State is just too powerful here in this second period. Stanford cannot figure out this option offense, and especially they can't stop Rex Kern, the quarterback. First down, not first and goal. Second man through. Larry Zelina, who uh, probably is the best all-around running back they have and has been injured all year, Cleveland, Ohio. He's just short of the five, but second down, five to go. Now they're getting five, six, seven, eight yards in a crap. Rich Galbos, 33, replaces Zelina. 14 to 10. Ohio State ahead. Little over seven minutes to play in the first half. Turn right in the ball and stop the time at the four yard line. Number 87, Ron Cajo of Glendora, California, senior. They now have a third down and two and a half to go. This drive started on the Ohio State 40. We have a timeout charged to Ohio State. That's their third timeout of this half. Action will continue here at the Rose Bowl. The score is Ohio State 14 and Stanford 10. You know, the little thoughts today, uh, I joke, they've been watching the commercials. It just shows that everything that a kid sees that makes such a deep impression on his mind. And uh, they recognize me wherever they see me. And they know that it's their good chicken that they had. And I've got a bunch of fans there. There's just millions of them. It's the greatest joy in the world to have. And I believe in the future, we've got another whole generation of chicken eaters coming up. Kentucky Fried Chicken, a real old-fashioned treat. Here it is. Solid luxury. New Charger has completely restyled uh, this year. Sir, I, I, I love a Charger, but... Uh... Oh, a family man, huh? Yeah. I'll tell you what. Looking for uh, economy. Good mileage. Yeah. Lots of room, of course. Right on. What do you got? How about this? A Charger? You're putting me on. New Dodge Charger. If your family's too young for square wheels, you can't afford not to be Dodge material. And the Ohio State fans rocking to a little spinning wheel. Then the 15,000 of them came here from Columbus, 50 chartered planes. 102,000 on hand for the Rose Bowl. Beautiful afternoon here, 75 degrees. Five minutes and one second, Ohio State's had the ball on this drive. And as Woody Hayes calls it, his grinding meat offering. They're up to three and a half of Stanford. It's third and two and a half to go. Or a first down. That's Hayden. And he stopped at the three. The timing, Kyle, seemed to be a little bit off when he started that play. A little bit. It was also a sort of a deceptive type of play. They sent one of their halfbacks. I think it was, I believe, Campana coming back around to the opposite side, trying to influence a Stanford defensive unit. Stanford has stayed pretty much in a four-man line which is a little difficult to stop those option plays. There are too many openings between the four men and the way the Buckeyes offensive line is coming off that ball, getting to them too quickly. Fred Schramm will try a field goal from the Stafford 10, the high snap, the kick is blocked, and it is no good. They blocked it. I believe Benny Barnes rushed in there and blocked Fred Schramm's kick. So Stanford holds, which could be a psychological lift for them. After the high 40 rammed it to the three and a half. They were stopped on two plays in a row and then they missed the field goal. Stanford ball on their own 20. Super special weekend. January 16th and 17th. The Bing Crosby Pro-Am. Saturday 6 to 7 p.m. Sunday, A Man Named Lombardi. The documentary on the life of Vince Lombardi. 
produced by a good friend of ours, George Flynn. On Sunday, the Super Bowl, a pregame show. Special guest, Joe Namath, and I'll be there. And then the Super Bowl ball game itself. And the Bing Crosby goal. Pluck it. It is no good. The Randy Bataha, which is a Czechoslovakian name. From Garden Grove, California. He wears the same number as quite a pass receiver. Used to wear at Stanford. Named Gene Washington. Step right into his shoes. Second down, 10. Stanford on her 20. Let's check Plunkett right now. He's 7 out of 14. That's 3 to pick 210 pounder. Plunkett, he's out to the 25, to the 30, to the 35. He's at the 40 and races to the sideline to stop the clock and goes into the Stanford bench. He can move. He's not a wild scrambler, but he can he can move it on the ground. Watch Stillwagon, 68. Sandy just turning him to the right. And here comes Plunkett up that little gap. Number 75, Bill Myers turning out on his block. Picking up 62, Terrell Smith, the left guard. And there goes Plunkett, taking advantage of that tremendous charge by Stillwagon. That's twice Stillwagon's come in there and maybe overcommitted himself, Kyle, and they moved him out with a trap. Well, he's so aggressive, uh, they're trying to take advantage of his strength by letting him overshoot the play. That was one way to do it. Plunkett ran a quarterback draw earlier. Jack Brown to the 45 of Stanford, where Jim Stillwagon hit him. Stillwagon was second on his Stanford team in tackles with 92. Stan White, their right linebacker, led. Mount Vernon, Ohio. Stillwagon is about as quick a defensive lineman as Ohio State's ever had. Number 68. He's a lineman of the year for everybody. Won the Outland Trophy Award. Second down eight. Stanford on their 45. They're trailing 14 to 10. There's a blitz on, and he tried to unload it. There's a flag down. Sensen ball blitzed again from the safety position. Number three, the All-American safety blitzed again. Watch it. Number and you three. can see him again. You see Stillwagon taking off to the right to occupy Sandy. And here comes Sensabaugh. And there was holding on the play. I think they charged it to Dan Lightfoot, the right right guard, rather. That one will hurt the Indians. Puts them back on their 22-yard line. From the spot of the foul, they lost on that play 23 yards. They now have a second down and 31 yards to go. They're behind 14 to 10. They grabbed an earlier 10 nothing lead when they shocked Ohio State. But Ohio State came right back. A team that never seems to lose its poise, Ohio State. Now it must be Stanford to come from behind. Second down, 31. From the Stanford 22. Five minutes to go in the half. That's complete for the 37 yard line to Demia Washington to split in. Harry Howard right on top of him. One thing about this safety red dog that we've been talking about, we've seen Mike Sensabaugh of Ohio State so effectively uh, executing, is that the quarterback sees the safety man blitzing. The receivers also have to be aware of it, looking in. I'm sure that uh, Plunkett will be talking to his receivers to be looking for that red dog so that they can expect that ball a little quicker, cut their pass route a little shorter. Third and 16 for Stanford from their 37. Right on the button to the 40, 35, and down to the 31 is Jamea Washington. Boy, Plunkett, you couldn't throw a more perfect pass than that one. And he got good protection, too. Excellent protection from Smith, Lightfoot, Sandy. There he goes. Strong arm. We can see him working again on number 28. That's Harry Howard curling right around Howard. Lassiter now replaces Demia Washington, who's caught two in a row. First down, Stanford on the Ohio State 31. Shockley and Jackie Brown set behind Plunkett. Lassiter set to the right, but Taha to the left. Plunkett on the option to Brown. Brown gets away from Sensabaugh. Brown down that sideline is pulled out of bounds. 
on the Stanford 11. Since the ball had a crack and missed him as Brown outran him. And there was a little twist, a Plunkett option play. Jim Plunkett. On the 14, they say he stepped out. First down for Stanford on the Ohio State 14. Jim Plunkett is 9 out of 16. They got a momentary hold and they go to the 10. That's Hillary Shockley, who down around the goal line is their best runner. George Hazenhall, number 70, of Garfield Heights, Ohio, stopped him, helped by Stan White of Ken, Ohio. Shockley gained uh, the most yards of any Stanford runner this year, 622 yards. On the 10 yard line of Ohio State, second and six, there are three minutes and 20 seconds to go in the half. Ohio State leading 14 to 10. And driving to the 12 is Hillary Shockley again, number 38. Number 67, Ralph Holloway. And Mark DeBevick, the end. Stanford has converted to the first down twice out of four times. Four out of eight for Ohio State. Chad Williams is coming in to tackle John Ralston with his clipboard. There's Williams getting in there in a goal line defense. On the eight yard line, it's third down now and four to go. And a fumble, and it looks like an Ohio State recovery. Ohio State's ball. Since the ball fell on it, number three. Bob Moore on the inbound, a tight end around, fumble it. Since the ball recovers to stop the Stanford drive on the 12 or 13 yard line of Ohio State. Stanford has fumbled three times and lost once. They have not had a pass intercepted, so they've had only one turnover. Ohio State has it, hasn't turned the ball over once. Turn on the pitch out to Galbos, nearly a bad pitch out, and he's out to his 22 for Dave Tipton. And the safety man coming up, Kaufman helped him. Tipton 76, he's played a magnificent game up front for Stanford so far. Ohio State on their 22 with a second down in the yard to go. Two minutes to go in the first half. Ohio State leading 14 to 10. Hayden to the 24 yard line for a first down Ohio State. Again is Tipton and Jeff Seaman, the middle linebacker. We'll see if Stanford alters their defensive alignment at all. They've been in a 4 3 defensive set most of the ball game, in fact, all of the ball game with the minute 48 in the clock running. Turn throwing deep over the head of Jankowski, number 82. Jankowski being covered by number 21, Charles McLeod. Trying to hit that bomb just before the end of the half. Second down 10. Now Stanford after leading 10-0, Ohio State rolled back in two long drives to take a 14-10 lead. Ohio State put on its third sustained drive, tried a field goal and missed it. And then Stanford came back on a 72-yard drive to fumble the ball away. Delina's out. Rich Galbos has gone in the Ohio State backfield. Second down 10. Ohio State on their 25. Jankowski is split to the left. Up the middle they go to Jim John Brockington on his 30 yard line. Dennis Moore, number 82, playing the place of the injured Simone today. Stanford has asked for a timeout now. They stop the clock with a minute 26 to go in the half. Third down and five for Ohio State on their 30. So action will continue here at the Rose Bowl, and the score is Ohio State 14 and Stanford 10.
Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, John Brody. I, John Brody. Have switched to Gillette Platinum Plus Plate. Have switched to Gillette Platinum Plus Plate. Because they shave me closer and with more comfort. Closer and smoother. No, wait. Uh, that's how they shave me. Yeah, that's not the way I said it, John. Yeah, but I'm the quarterback. Mm-hmm. Gillette Platinum Plus. Double edge or injector. With platinum smooth edges for a smoother shave. Show the Platinum Plus injector blades, John. They're smoother too, huh? Not to mention more comfortable. Okay, I won't mention it. John, let me explain something to you. Well, sure, yeah, I use an antiperspirant, but I still get wet. Um, I'm, I guess I'm just a nervous type. If your antiperspirant doesn't do what you hired it to, fire yours and hire ours. Right Guard Antiperspirant. Get the drying agent that really helps keep you dry. Stops odor, too. There are three other kids in the family. Oh, we all use different antiperspirants. <laughs> we all still get wet. Then fire yours and hire ours. Ours is Right Guard in the silver can. It'll be third and five for Ohio State on their 30-yard line. They're leading 14 to 10. There's the time, a minute 26 to go in the first half. They're running it again. He gets the first down. Rex Kern. And that'll put him over 100 yards rushing. How's that for a quarterback? Over 100 yards rushing and a half. Ohio State first down on their 39. 104 yards for Rex Kern on the ground. Now straight left. Throws to the sideline. Out of bounds goes the tight end, Jan White, who was an All-American hurdler at Harrisburg, Pennsylvania in high school. Three-year starter. Ohio State on their 43, second down, six. A minute 13 to play. We talked about the second half. It's something for Stanford to worry about if they go on past records. Third on the option. Pitches out with the right split second to Galbos who turned that corner and goes into Stanford territory in the Stanford 48. It's another Ohio State first down with a minute four seconds remaining in the half. And they're going to line up without a huddle now. They have used three of their timeouts. And that one is good at the 44 of Stanford to Jan White, who stepped out of bounds to stop the clock. So now Ohio State's trying to race the clock for the goal line. Second and six. This must be an interesting phase of football for the Ohio State team, not known as a passing team and not a wide open team, to face a situation where they have to go the length of the field with the clock running out on them. Kern pitching. Here's an option pass. Galbos is throwing deep. Incomplete. Pass with intended for Jankowski to split in 82. Woody Hayes is about to send a play in. Ohio State, you see the number of plays they run off, 49 to 28 for Stanford. My information is correct. That's the first pass uh, Galbos has thrown this season. It'll be third down now and six to go with 50 seconds remaining in the half. Turn, hit. The 49 and Stanford by Bill Alexander. Number 72, a senior of San Diego. They have a fourth and 11, Ohio State. Stanford has time to stop the clock. There are your first downs, 13 to 8. Let's recap what's happened in this game. Ohio State got the ball, was stopped. They tried a first down on a Stanford 39-yard line after a drive. Stanford stopped them, took over. And Stanford went 59 yards with Jackie Brown going over for a touchdown three yards out. Plunkett had passed for a touchdown to Shockley that was called back. Stanford got the ball again and ripped Ohio State up on Plunkett's passing. They were finally stopped in the Ohio State 26, and Steve Horowitz kicked a 37-yard field goal. 
But Ohio State, which fell behind USC in the Rose Bowl here by an identical 10 nothing score, came back on a 65 yard seven play drive, rocket and plunging over. They came back again on a 65 yard 10 play drive, rocket and plunging over, and they lead 14 to 10. Now a punt formation. Lego is a punt formation. Each team. They one punt previous to this. A fair catch call at the 19 yard line by Eric Cross. 27 seconds. Here in this change of possession, the clock will not start until the snap of the ball. 31 yard kick from scrimmage. 27 seconds remaining in the half. Ohio State ahead 14 to 10. For a passer of Plunkett's caliber, uh, that's. I would say not ample time, but he could certainly do it in that amount of time. We'll see what type of defensive alignment Ohio State comes up with. They're in sort of a three-man rush. Luckett is nine out of 16 in passing for 113 yards. That's below his usual yardage average. He draws it to Shockley, who brings it out to the 29-yard line. Dan Lampka, Don Lampka, defensive back, brought him down. And Stanford calls time to stop the clock with 18 seconds to go, where they'll have a second down and a yard to go. Jim Plunkett is only the second Heisman winner to play in the Rose Bowl the year he won the Heisman Trophy. The first one was O.J. Simpson in 1968. And there's Plunkett talking to the Stanford uh, sideline. And as Woody Hayes pointed out uh, prior to the game, interesting uh, change for them. Ohio State faced Simpson in that uh, 68 game. Facing a great runner. This time they're facing a great passer. Doesn't look like they've changed. <laughs> Ohio State hasn't changed much. They're still as strong as ever on defense. He was very frank about it, wasn't he, Kyle? He said, we didn't stop O.J. Simpson Cole, but we contained him some and we won. We don't expect to stop Jim Plunkett Cole, but we expect to contain him some and win again. Second and one. Plunkett fires. Intercepted. He tried to get out of bounds, and he does. And grabbing that ball was Dan White, a linebacker, number 88. The pass was intended for Randy Vataha. And Ohio State has another shot now with 10 seconds to go in the half. There's some curious and fast talking on the sideline there with Woody Hayes and Rex Kern as he Kern leaves to go out onto the field. What type of play, what type of attack to go with just 10 seconds remaining. That's the first interception for Plunkett in the game was averaged only one interception every 20 passes this year. First down Ohio State in the Stanford 35. The clock is moving now. Burn fires and he's got Hayden but he misses it. Not a bad. But four seconds to go. Benny Barnes was chasing Leo Hayden down that sideline. Kern has attempted three out of six. For 29 yards. But don't look at that. Look at his ground gaining today. Net 99. He was over 104. Now it's down to net 99. For a half. 99 for a game is a good hallmark for any running back. Ohio State has run off 51 plays to Stanford's 29. This may be the last play of the half. And it's going to be. Turns pass. No good. That's the last play of the first half. Well, there they go. Both teams getting fine ovations. From the near side here, Ohio State. From the far side, as Charles McLeod goes off, the Stanford Indians. And there's your score at halftime. A very interesting first half. With Stanford dominating in the early part of the game and Ohio State taking control in the second quarter. And then when it looked like Stanford was fading, they came back on a beautifully executed 72-yard drive only to fumble the ball away down near the Ohio State goal line. And as long as they have Jim Plunkett throwing, they're going to be dangerous here in the second half. But Ohio State in the second half this year has scored 158 points to the opponent's 36. And in the third period alone, they racked up 90 points to their opponent's nine points. So they're a team that seems to punish the opposition, wear them down, and play their best ball in the second half. Let's see if Stanford will be able to be a good second-half team also. 
We're ready to go now with our halftime show, the Ohio State University Marching Band, directed by Paul Droste. 150 band members, 120 of these appearing on the field, 30 on the sidelines to handle the props and act as all of them. And now we switch you over to Ohio State Marching Band. drills should click to perfection and leave directors lazy for lack of direction. A computer can react to people with unpredictability or hate once they've punched into their program. Ha ha, bend, spindle, or mutilate. Now we'll have to whip it into shape by hand, which shows only humans can lead a band. Dating by computer is becoming quite the thing, which rhymes with fling and cling and ring and then with offspring. But Priscilla shunned her printout of a suitor and said, speak for yourself, you cute computer.
We fed it full of fact and fiction and ask it not to be absurd, but please to unwind a prediction. And here it comes, a four-letter word. States leading at halftime 14 to 10 and halftime activities will continue from the 1971 Rose Bowl game after we pause for station identification. Auburn meets Ole Miss, the Gator Bowl, tomorrow afternoon. This 1971 Rose Bowl game is brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. Engineering with care. Your host for today, your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer. By the Gillette Company, makers of the dry look. The wet head is dead. Long live the dry look. By Goodyear, the only makers of long-wearing polyglass tires. And by Marlboro Filter Cigarettes. Come to where the flavor is. Come to Marlboro Country. Well, here at halftime, Ohio State leading 14 to 10 at the Rose Bowl. Stanford's band now examines the prospects for the year. A series of New Year's resolutions for the nation are directed by Arnie Barnes, the Stanford marching band. <laughs>
We resolve this new year to clean up our political problems, to wash D.C. The band plays Make Me Smile. should be to deal with the population bomb, exploding our trained resources. Let's plan to avoid an unpleasant mistake at the midnight hour. unemployment, inflation, the consumer revolt. The baby's pacifier pictured on the field symbolizes the need to keep the customer satisfied. resolution for 1971, not to persist in mistakes, not to let the problems go unsolved. We're not going to take it anymore. <laughs> 